get out of me. Take it out of me. Man, uh, I was uh, I was riding in this morning. I was I was riding in this morning and the Spirit of God brought something to me that I, it's not in my message but it was in my ministry this week and for my 45th birthday listen some of y'all already know I listen ain't no, I, I ain't got nothing to have I, I didn't make so many mistakes in my life I'm like God why are you still with me he said, I'm going to make you a walking, talking demonstration of mercy. <laughs> Your neighbor is hating on you because they can't understand why God's still blessing you. Look at them and tell them I'm a walking, talking demonstration of mercy. And Y'all not talking. And the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God began to speak to me on my birthday. And it, I was like, I don't want to be deep on my birthday, but this is what God said to me. He said, this year for your 45th birthday, I'm giving you clean hands. He said, everything that was on your hands, everything you did, he said, I'm about to wipe your hands clean. I don't know who that's for in here, but if I were you, I would throw my hands up and say, same grace. God, I got some stuff on my hands that I'm, I'm ashamed of. I, I got some stuff on my hands that I'm embarrassed by. But I believe that if I would just worship you today, that whatever it is that's not like you, that you would take it off of my hands. Somebody say, Lord, take it off of my hands. It's too much for me to carry. Take it off of my hands. It's too much for me to bear. Take it out of my hands. Holy Spirit, we need to hear from you. Now speak. Talk to us and can we believe you? And we'll give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody clap your hands. Let's move. That wasn't for everybody, but I needed to say it. Listen, now you can, you can lay your hands on your neighbor without any anxiety and without any hesitation because your hands are clean. Lay your, lay your hands on somebody. Tell them my hands are clean now. Tell them, tell them, oh my. On this fifth day of the eighth month, on this day of grace, on this month of new beginnings, I, I'm walking throughout the rest of this year with fresh grace on my hands and whatever I touch I said whatever I touch will prosper lay your hands on somebody tell them whatever I touch will prosper I said lay your hands on them and tell them whatever I touch will prosper I may not have a title but I show sure up have an anointing <laughs> you throw your head back open your mouth and scream It's hot in church. Get your Bible. I don't know who I'm talking to, but your last no just became your next yes. Get up on your feet and go to dancing like you already living in it. Go to dancing like you already work there. Go to dancing like you already recorded it. Go to shouting like you already wrote it. Nothing. 
on, get your Bible. Your neighbor need a word. They didn't come for all this. Matthew chapter 11. If you got it. If you got it. Matthew chapter 11. Verse 28. Y'all play too much. I ain't got time to play with y'all. I'm expecting a miracle this week. You can stand up in here and wait on your flesh to respond. I'm going to go ahead and praise God whether I feel it or not. Because I understand that if I praise him, he'll respond. Mm -hmm. Come on, Matthew chapter 11. I got 14 minutes fooling with y'all. a favor lay your hands on your neighbor tell him by this time next week you're gonna have a fresh testimony I heard this in the first service and I just heard it again while you were shouting God was canceling some of your debts your Bible please look at the screen come on Tario stop playing because by this time next year you're gonna have a son named Claude Broom the third Matthew 11. Let me give you this so we can go. Come on, your neighbor ain't really into church like that. Come on, let me give them something they can let me give them something they can walk away with. Sit down. You're just being emotional. Sit down. You and your feelings. Sit down. <laughs> oh God, I'm trying. Okay, Matthew chapter 11. Let's read. I can't see. Come on, let's read. Come to me. While your neighbor wonder why you screaming and all that. Come to me. All who are weary and heavy laden. Oh, I'm telling you, I feel the Holy Ghost here so strong. Oh, God, help me. Do me a favor, grab your neighbor. Grab your neighbor by the hand. Creative miracles are happening in this room. Grab your neighbor's hand. Something supernatural is breaking out in this room. I'm I'm trying to move on from it, but God is about to supernaturally restore your strength. Come on, 
Bashia. Oro manda na 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 bashi. Oro manda ba koran banda rama ba katara mana na maso. Oro mana na bashia. Come on, come on. We have we have slipped into a place in the spirit. The spirit of God is ministering to many of you who have been exhausted and tired. You've come to everybody else today. Jesus says, "Come to me." You tried everything else. You tried everybody else. You thought if you just got you some weed, you thought if you got you some sex, you thought if you got you some liquor, you thought if you got you some money, you thought if you got a new job, you thought if you moved to another city and you figured out all the while Jesus is what you were missing. Jesus is saying, "Come to me. Come to me." Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. I, I came to minister to people today. You've been, you're skinny, but you're heavy because you're carrying too much. You, uh, you're in shape, but you're overweight because you got too much stuff on you. And God is saying today, come to me. Come to me. Come to me. Come to me. I don't know how I'm going to get out of this. Come to me. I came, I came to minister to people today. That's why this anointing is so strong. If you're in this room and you've been tired, if you're in this room and, and, and you said to yourself, I wish I could just, just disappear. I w you're in this room, I almost hate to say it because I don't know if your kids are in here and I don't, I don't, wanna, I don't want, want them to feel some kind of way, but you're in this room and you said to yourself, if I could just walk away from everything and everybody and start over, I would. You're in this room, come here, come here, come here, come to this altar, come to this altar, there's rest. The spirit of God is about to consume the spirit of weariness. The spirit of God is about to consume the spirit of depression. Somebody pray in the Holy Ghost. 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 Ramanda, Ramanda, Basia. Come, come, come to me. Come, come. If I could just walk away from everything, I would. I'm sick. I'm sick of everything. I'm sick of everybody. I'm tired. I just, I just need a break. God, God told me to tell you it's breaking. It's breaking, it's breaking. There's a shifting in my favor. Yes, it is. Minister, bring minister. There's a breaking in my direction. If you believe it, open your mouth and declare it on this altar. There's a shifting in my favor. In my favor. As I praise. Raise it up, church. Say. There's a breaking in my favor. In my favor. There's a shifting. For somebody worshiping online, wherever you are, you're worshiping online. There's a shifting in your direction.
on the screen so the people can get it and, and declare it. Say it. There's a break Say it's breaking, it's breaking. Say it again, it's breaking. You can't have it if you won't say it, man of God. Come on, say it, it's breaking. Don't wait to feel it breaking, just you, it's gonna respond to your words, it's breaking. That feeling of, a, uh, that feeling of betrayal, that, that feeling of abandonment, it's breaking, it's, it's, it's breaking off of your house. I declare it's breaking off of your house. brought you to the altar to get you around the fire of God we understand the purpose of the altar it's to position ourselves so the Spirit of God can do for us what we could not do for ourselves say it it's breaking it's breaking say it again it's breaking listen you have authority powers in your mouth you you have whatever you say say it it's breaking it's breaking it's breaking God was, God was dealing with me the last couple of days and I had a whole series of, of messages prepared to start today and God shifted it, Danita, the last 24 to 48 hours. And the Lord took me to Matthew chapter 11. This, this chapter is a, Justin, this is, this is the same chapter. Listen at how this chapter begins. I, I didn't have time to talk about it in the message, but I'll just give it to you. This is the chapter where John while he's in jail sends a message to Jesus and says listen are you the one and everybody on this altar has been asking the same question is this real you've been saying to yourself Jesus are you the one or should I look for another Wow. Jesus says you tell John you go tell John that the blind see Tell John that the deaf ear. Listen to me. When you walk away from this altar, God's about to make you a living demonstration of who he is. People are going to look at your life and say the deaf ear. They're going to look at your life and say the lame walk. They're going to look at your life and say the blind see. He goes down a few more verses and he says, Tell John the kingdom of heaven suffered violence. And the violent take it by force. You're on this altar because you've been in a season of spiritual violence. You, you've been under attack. The devil has come at you in a way you're like, what did I do? I ain't even no preacher. I ain't even really, really live that good. Why are you coming at me like this? God's about to make you a walking, talking demonstration of mercy and grace. God's about to make you a walking billboard of what I'll do for a man when he tells me yes. So he gets toward the end of the chapter and he says, come to me. I know you've been in a violent season. The, the way the devil came at you, it just didn't seem fair. The way the devil came at you, it just didn't seem right. You said to yourself, what did I do to deserve this? Jesus says, come to me. And what God kept speaking to me, he said, Tell him I'm about to do a hard reset. 
I, I don't know if y'all remember, I started at the top of the year talking about this. Remember, a hard reset is when you take a device back to the factory settings, listen, or to the master settings. God said to tell you the master is about to reset you. <laughs> He's about to reset you because you don't even realize this, but life, the stuff you went through changed your settings. The stuff you went through downloaded some apps and shifted some stuff around. And now stuff that should be easy is pinwheeling. In other words, stuff that should be easy got you going in circles and cycles. God said, I'm about to do a hard reset. But here's the thing about a hard reset. Whatever I didn't put on the hard drive gets removed. There's some people that you downloaded. There's some relationships you downloaded. There, there's some sickness that you downloaded. God said, I'm about to wipe your drive clean. And I'm about to put you in a position where you can function, where you're not going in circles. The same arguments, the same drama. She got a different name, but it's the same woman. He tall and light skinned, the last one was short and fat, but it's the same spirit you're dealing with. God said, I'm about to do a hard reset. I'm about to get that stuff off of your system. Hold on, throw your hands up. Throw your hands. This makes sense to me now. He said, I'm, I'm, about, to, I'm about to get it off of your hands. Throw, throw your hands up. There you go. There you go. There you go. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Oh, don't look at me. Don't look at me. Oh, oh, close your eyes. Because the master is resetting you. Stuff that you had on your system that you did not even know was there. <laughs> Open your mouth. Pray in the Holy Ghost, please. The Spirit of God is dealing with your heart in a strong way. There are people in your life that after this reset, they will no longer be in your system. Uh, Rabbi, I decree and declare deliverance is happening on this altar. People you thought you couldn't get away with. People, people you thought you couldn't get away from. People, people you thought you would never be able to live without. You, you just could not, your body just could not get away from them. God is delivering your spirit. Every soul tie is being severed by the Spirit of God. You will no longer remember what his cologne smells like. You, you won't remember what his skin feels like. God is removing it from your system. Holy Spirit, we say yes. Holy Spirit, we say yes. Somebody tell him yes. 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 God told me to tell you two things today and I got to let you go. Are you listening? He said, I'm about to do a hard reset. He said, I'm about to do a hard. It's going to be hard. If this was easy, everybody would be doing it, Eddie. It's going to be hard. But this is what he said to me. If you let me reset you, put it on the screen for me, Devin. There it is. You're going to find rest in the reset. Do you see it? Do you see it, Liz? Do you see it? There's rest in the reset. He said, come to me. I, I know you're heavy laden. I, I know you're burning. But what I'm about to do, I'm about to give you rest in your soul. Your soul is about to find rest. And you ain't going to have to die to get it. In your mind, in your will, and in your emotions, God's about to help you find rest. He said, but I need you to try me. You tried everything else. I need you to try me. You, uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, need you, I need you to try me. You, you tried them. Now I need you to try me. He says, come to me. I know you're heavy laden. I know you're, you're burdened. Try me. Take my yoke upon you and learn. Let's just be honest. The reason why you keep going through the same thing is because you ain't learned. 
This time, you're going to tell your neighbor, you're going to learn today. You're going to learn today. You're going to learn today. Everybody touching somebody. I got to get out of here. I got to let you go. He said, I want you to try God. Two things he told me to tell you. While you're holding your neighbor's hand, make them look at you. Tell them, try God. Try God. Try God. Try God. <laughs> Come on, tell them. Say, try God. Try God. Try God. Try God. Try God. While you're trying God, I need you to trust God. I need you to trust that what he's trying to teach you is for the benefit of your future. He's not trying to keep anything from you. He's trying to get the best stuff to you. But you got to trust me. Holy Spirit, we say yes again. Some of us have been on this altar for the same thing that we're on this altar for right now. But we decree and declare that this time it's different. This time we're going to take on your yoke. We're going to trust you to teach us what we need to know for the next place in our lives. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that today represents the last day in that old violent season. Thank you that when we walk away from this altar, when we walk out of this church, when we turn off the live stream, that we will be officially walking in a season of rest. I got to say this to you again because it keeps coming up in my spirit and I want you to confess it if you believe it. This is my season of restoration. I got to speak this over your life again because some of y'all missed it the first time and you forgot I told you. But God is about to give you your stuff back and you're not going to have to work to get it. <laughs> you better tell somebody, God going to give me my stuff back and I'm not going to have to work to get it. Because once God wipes my drive clean, I'm going to realize that there was stuff on my system that I didn't even realize was there because I had stuff that I downloaded that was blocking it. Somebody say, no more pinwheeling. No more, no pin, no more pinwheeling. You, you, you lost your momentum and you were about to crash, but you pressed your way to Jesus today. Your life will never be the same again. In Jesus' name, it is so. Amen. 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 Somebody say, as I pray. I'm out of time. Listen. Listen, before you walk away from this altar, everybody be still. Before you walk away from this altar, I need you to answer this question. Who's your pastor? What church are you connected to? What church are you serving in? If you cannot answer those questions, I want you to consider staying on this altar. I believe God has led you here on purpose. If, listen, if you have stuff back at your seat that you need to get, go get it because everybody in here ain't all the way there. Some, some of us, Jesus, still working on us. Go get your stuff and come back to this altar. People are coming. People are coming. People are coming. I said people are coming to the altar. Where y'all at? Where y'all Where y'all at? People are already making their way to the altar. Come on, church. Come on. You're in this church. You don't have a pastor. You don't have a church. Welcome home, man of God. Welcome home. Hey, y'all, people are making decisions for Jesus. Where y'all at? I want you to clap like it means something to you. Come on now. Clap like it's a big deal. Come on. Y'all. Come on. Yep. Make sure we get it. Listen. Hey, mama. <laughs> Somebody shout out, welcome home. Welcome home. Welcome home. Listen, listen, listen. I'm waiting on about five people to come out of the balcony and about another seven or eight to come from the floor. Listen, I'm already, we got three minutes to get out of here and I'm going to take two to do this. I need you to come now. I need you to come now. Come on, there's one I'm waiting.